everybody today we're going to paint these cute little lemons with some leaves we're using 140 pound cold pressed paper lemon yellow sap green burnt umber and a little lemon uh, yellow orange color and a number 12 round brush I start out by taking my lemon yellow and just putting a little bit of water in it and trying to get the shape of my lemon so I'm working wet on wet here. I'm going to fill in my lemon with my lemon yellow color and get a lot of yellow near the edges and leave sort of a whiter, lighter section in the middle where the light's going to hit the lemon. So I'm just adding a wash of clear water in the middle here. And I'm also going to start adding in a little bit of my um, orangey color. It's actually like a yellow deep color and there might be a little tiny bit of the brown in it. I'm going to add that deep color to the edges of my lemon and around the bottom and I'm going to try to make that little um, divot of the end of the lemon that sticks out and I'm thinking about my light coming from the top there towards the side and I'm just letting the wet colors mix together. I'm adding my second lemon shape and doing the same exact thing and everything is still pretty wet. We're working wet on wet here. When painting with watercolors, you would paint from light to dark because we want to preserve the white of our paper as the whites in our artwork. We can go over it with gouache later if you want to, some whites, but typically I like to leave the white of the paper because your paintings look a lot more sparkly that way. And in oils and pastels and acrylics, you typically work from um, dark to light and you paint in your whites at the end. For me, my watercolors, I like to build up my shadow areas. I do know that watercolors actually dry lighter than the initial wash that you put down. But since we're painting lemons, I'm kind of, you know, just building up a little at a time. So as I build up my color and I add more yellows and more browns where my shadows are, I will go back in with a clean wet brush and just brush away some of the highlights to bring back the white of the paper.
So I'm pretty happy with my initial washes and I'm going to dab in some of my browns, a little bit of green, a little bit of the orange here and there just to get those little dots of the skin of the orange. Just give that impression of it being dappled with those little, those little dots. And I'm going around that little um, dibbit at the end of the lemon and the other one is going to have where the branch was, that little um, brown spot. Um, and I'm just going to keep playing with that and then when I'm happy with those little dots where I have them I'm also going to go in and just drop a little bit of clean water here and there just to break up the colors and it just creates a beautiful natural little um, texture on its own that's the beauty of watercolor. So I'm just adding some little yellow dots around. My background colors are still damp, so it's going to blend even though it's probably almost dry, but it's not quite dry. And I'm gonna go back with some plain water, and I'm going to start the stems and the leaves now. I'm going to just give myself an idea of where I'm placing it. I'm going right up to my lemon, but I'm not actually touching it. Otherwise, it would bleed right into the lemon. So if your lemon is not dry yet. I, I would actually let it dry and then do the stem, but I can be very impatient. So I just went as close as I can without touching. And if it did touch, it would not be a big deal to me anyway. So I'm just establishing a little stem there with my brown. I added a little darker color to it and I'm using the tip of my brush. My brush is actually a Princeton long round velvet touch and it's such a nice brush that it comes to a very fine point so I find that I can use this brush to do big washes and yet very small lines because it's a very really decent brush so I'm just adding some light greens here I'm deciding where I'm going to put my leaves and then I'm just going to go in and press down with my brush to the full part of the um, the hairs and just lift up and here you have a beautiful shape of a leaf and you could dab in some other colors you want to get some variations of your leaves and different values and maybe add some different colors in it while it's wet and it's going to look very beautiful that way
So my lemon has dried and I'm going to put that little end of the lemon where it hits the tree branch and it's a little brown, it's a little green and it has like little dimples in there. So I'm going to do my best to just emulate that end of the, of the lemon. And I go back and I add more shadow and more dots where I see I feel like it needs to have a little bit more form so I'll add some more and I'm not afraid to I'm not afraid of feeling I'm not afraid of messing up my painting because it's just paper and the more you practice even if you make a mistake the better the next painting is going to come out so every time you do a painting whether it's a success or a failure you're always learning how to make a better painting and I actually just really love it, so um, I could do this all day long. So I'm just going to keep adding some more shadows and trying to define the shape of my lemon. I feel like it needs a little bit more dark to make the form look more round. But all in all, it's a beautiful painting. And what I try to do in my paintings is look for sharp edges and um, undefined edges. So you have uh, contrast always. Any kind of contrast in your painting of light and dark. Um, found edges and lost edges, sharp edges versus soft edges, 
all over your painting and you're the artist so you decide where that goes typically the sharper it is is going to make you focus into that area and a softer edge is going to make it fade back as well as a darker color like a blue or cooler color blues tend to or greens on the blue side or purples tend to recede and look like they're further back whereas lighter more vibrant yellow warmer colors tend to pull themselves forward so you have all that to play with in your paintings and feel free to experiment and if you make a mistake it's okay um, it's just paper so let me finish this painting up and I just want to say that I thank you so much for watching my video this far. Um, I love teaching and I love painting, so I thought I'd just mix them together and start this YouTube channel. If you liked it, please subscribe and hit that little notification button so you could see the next one that I put up. And um, YouTube will help me, you know, put this on the rankings. I would love to build this channel for you. Um, thank you so much and stay well and have a great day.